Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and open up this package that I've received with the intake manifold. And this is kind of my first look at everything that comes with it. So the first thing that we notice on top, this is actually the plug and play reflex kit. So this allows you to install the reflex without tapping any wires. I'll be posting a video about installing that in the future. And then we have the actual intake manifold. So we'll go ahead and take that out of the plastic. So as you can see, it's a nice clean black finish, pretty simple. We'll go ahead and look around and the first thing that you'll notice is this big hole on the back. This is where your stock intercooler will go. So we're actually going to remove the stock intake manifold, pull the stock intercooler core out of it, and then insert it into this intake manifold. So that will basically make your whole cooling system and everything work just like stock. And then if you look at the top, you'll see these six ports on each of the runners. And these are for port injection. So I got six 750cc injectors that I'm going to be installing in these holes. And that'll just make sure that I have all the fueling that I could need in the future without having any issues, even with full E85. So even for most big turbo setups, that'll provide all the fuel that I would need. Now, another thing to consider is if you're adding port injection, you're typically looking for higher boost levels. And in those scenarios, there's a risk that your plastic intake manifold can crack. So a big benefit to this one is if you want to add port injection, you're basically replacing it with a metal manifold that will be much stronger, but it is still using the stock intercooler core, so we don't expect it to have a significant improvement in IETs. I will be testing that in the future and posting a video on the results, but just keep that in mind. It's not really for improved cooling. It's just to add additional fuel without the risk of cracking your plastic manifold. Then if you look at the back of the manifold, you'll also see these four ports back here. These can be used for boost reference. So if you need a reference for your fuel pump, meth injection system, boost controller, anything like that, you can put fittings in these holes and that will give you the boost reference you need to make those systems work. And then one last thing you guys should know is if you look at the top of the manifold and see it's completely smooth, this is different from the stock manifold that has holes for the different lines that are used on your EVAP system. So the EVAP system is emissions related and this manifold deletes that system. If you have emissions testing, then you may need to swap back to your stock intake manifold for the times where you need to do emissions testing. You can also go through and disable all the codes that will come up in your custom tune. And I will put a list of the codes that I've disabled in the video description to help you guys get that started if you want to disable them yourself. But just keep in mind with those codes disabled, you won't get a check engine light, but those monitors also won't be ready. So if that's okay in your state, when you do emissions testing, cool. If not, then make sure you keep your stock manifold to swap back for your yearly checks. And let's go ahead and look through the accessories. So the first thing is this port injection line. This will tap into the stock fuel system so that we can get fuel to the fuel rail and our port injectors. Then we also have the six port injectors with their flow rate data. We also have an additional fitting for fuel pressure for my motive reflex. And I've got all of the hardware. So these are all the bolts and everything that you'll need to attach the intake manifold to the cylinder head and all the other parts that attach to it. We also have the fuel rail, so this is what will get the fuel to the port injectors. And of course we have the phenolic spacer, so this is going to be that barrier between the heat on the intake manifold and heat on the cylinder head. So we don't have issues with IATs because we don't want the hot cylinder head heat to transfer to our intercooler. Also it comes with this extension harness for the MAP sensor because it's relocated on this intake manifold. So this way you don't have to cut or splice any wires. It'll be just completely plug and play. Now, of course, the first step is to remove the stock intake manifold. However, I've already made a DIY that shows how to do this in my previous port injection install video. So please check that one out if you need a guide on how to remove the stock intake manifold. I know some of you guys hate when I do this, but I just don't want this DIY to be longer than it needs to be. So now we need to transfer some of the components over from your stock manifold to the new one. The first thing we're going to remove is the map sensor that's right on top of the manifold. If there's a screw in this hole, then you can unscrew it, but on a lot of manifolds, they don't have that. 
So you're just going to pry back these plastic clips and then the map sensor should pull straight out. Next we're going to start working on removing the stock intercooler core. So if you flip the manifold over you will see these screws that are actually going through the intercooler. And so you're going to get a Torx bit and remove each of these screws one by one. And then if you flip it over to the back, you'll see that there are eight screws around the perimeter of the intercooler. And all of those screws need to be removed in order to slide it out. So work your way around with your Torx bit and remove all of those screws. Next, we're going to remove the coolant lines from the intake manifold. On the bottom, there are these mounting blocks and there's a tab on each side where it's clipped into place. So I recommend sticking a pick tool on each side or like a small flathead screwdriver. And then it should just pop straight up. On the other coolant line, unfortunately it's a little bit harder to access it, but just take your time, do the same thing on the side you have access to, just stick a pick tool in, and then on the one towards the bottom, I used kind of like a hook to pull on the tab, and then that allowed me to release it so I could pull it straight up, and then you can kind of twist and pull both of them out of the intercooler. And here's how the mounting clips look. So. You can basically see you just need to squeeze it in on each side and it'll press in those clips so that you can release it from the mounting block. Then on top of the engine we're going to do the same thing with this upper coolant line. So just kind of release these two clips that are holding it onto the stock manifold and then you'll be able to pull it out from the intercooler connection. And now we can finally slide out the stock intercooler. It's going to be stuck on there pretty good so just take your time. Try not to use too much force because you don't want to bend the metal cover but push that off and you should be able to fully release it i just kind of did it off camera because it was easier and this is what it will look like when you remove it you'll just need to remove those black plastic covers before you install it in the bimmer network manifold now some of you guys might have heard of some fitment issues with these manifolds and unfortunately some of the manufacturing variation was causing some issues so Bimmer Network is just fixing the problem once and for all. And it all comes down to this map sensor. And normally on the stock intake manifold, it's mounted on one of the intake runners, but it can't be mounted on the runners on this manifold because that's where your port injectors go. So they had to move it to the gap between the runners. And one that kind of blocks this hole, makes it difficult to access this screw. And also there are screws on the valve cover that kind of stick out in this area. So if this isn't in the exact right position, you can potentially have issues. So they've modified the bracket and it'll actually rotate the map sensor so that you get the clearance you need and you don't have any issues with installation. So I'll show you guys how all of that goes on, but if you guys are wondering about fitment issues, map sensor issues, this completely fixes the problem and you can only get it through the Bimmer Network manifold. So let's go ahead and get this assembled. So this is what the intercooler looks like when you remove those black plastic covers. Nothing too crazy, so we're just going to get ready to slide it into the Bimmer Network manifold. The first thing we want to do is reinstall that gasket that goes around the perimeter of the opening. This will make sure that when you install the intercooler, there aren't any boost leaks. So absolutely make sure that you install this first. Then we're going to go ahead and slide the intercooler into the manifold. There are some alignment features at the back of the manifold to make sure that you install it straight. So if it feels like it's getting hung up a little bit, just kind of wiggle it back and forth or kind of use your fingers going through the opening of the manifold to make sure that it's going in straight. It should see completely flush with the face of that opening. Then we're going to put in the screws to hold the intercooler in place. Make sure you're using the screws that came with the manifold, not the ones that you removed from the stock manifold. Everything going in here needs to be a machine screw, so you can't reuse the plastic screws that were on the stock one. There are only going to be eight, so I know there are a lot of holes here, but you're not going to use every single one. This is basically what it's going to look like after you've installed all the screws, so just keep that in mind. You're not going to put a screw in every single hole. Next, we're going to put these screws through those four holes in the middle of the manifold. There is a flat and then like a rounded head. You can kind of pick which one you want to be on the top of the manifold. I prefer the flat ones. And these are going to screw into each other through the holes. So you put the screw through one side, the nut through the other side, and then you're going to screw them together. It's a little bit of a blind install, but it actually aligns a little bit easier than I expected. So 
just take your time, make sure they're fully seated. When you're tightening it down, make sure it's not cross-threading or anything. You shouldn't feel any excessive like resistance. And also, some people have recommended putting a little bit of blue Loctite on those screws just to make sure you don't have any like vibration causing them to loosen over time because that will cause a boost leak. Also, make sure you use those plastic washers so that it fully seals up the system. Next, we're going to put the gaskets on the intake manifold openings. Keep in mind, these are pretty much the same as the stock ones, but you will get replacements with the manifold. So we'll go ahead and use those, but if you ever need to replace them in the future, you can just buy the regular OEM gaskets. You're also going to want to put six of them on the phenolic spacer. You'll see the same kind of grooves in the spacer where they fit. So make sure you install those on both sides so that it's fully sealed. Next, we're going to reinstall the coolant lines onto the intercooler. And the way that I found is the easiest is basically install it at a 90 degree angle. And once it's lined up with the grooves, you basically rotate it. So those little features can kind of slide into place. So that'll fit it right into those little slots and avoid tearing up the plastic. You're going to do that on the bottom as well as the single one on the top and make sure that all of those are fully seated. And then we're going to address these four holes on the back. And again, depending on your setup, you might need these. So the kit comes with a bunch of fittings that you can use for boost reference, for your fuel pump, for your turbo, anything like that. I don't need any of them since my setup, you know, is pretty simple. So all I did was put a little bit of thread tape on these block offs and then I'm screwing them into the holes to make sure that it's fully sealed. So that'll make sure I don't have any boost leaks and I'll always have those available if I do any upgrades that need a boost reference in the future. Next, we're going to install the map sensor. So the screw here is what you're going to use to hold it in place once it's installed on the car. For now, we're just going to unscrew it and put the screw and nut off to the side. And then you're just going to push your map sensor in place. Again, this will allow you to rotate it so you can access those screw holes. But for now, we're not going to screw it in place just yet. Now, one other thing that we need to take care of is this. And this is our EVAP canister. It is a vent for the fuel tank. So fuel vapor comes out of the fuel tank underneath the car and comes up through this valve and it either routes it to the intake manifold or back to your intake so with this we basically delete the part that goes back to the manifold and a lot of people just delete the entire thing so what we can do are a couple things you can unplug it right here and just disconnect that part you can also basically go down in the car and disconnect it under the car. So you'll see there's basically one little clamp right here. And then if you look down, there is another clamp down there. And you can remove those two clamps. And if you go underneath the car, you can basically see this is where it's coming from and there's one other connector so it's this line and you're going to disconnect it from this white line so you can see there's a connector right there and then you can disconnect that from the white line or, you know, disconnect it somewhere else. And if you want to, you can delete it as far back as you want because that white line goes all the way back to the fuel tank. So if you want to remove that whole white line, you can do that as well. But basically, you're going to have to remove that part that goes to the intake manifold. So this is at least the front half in the engine bay completely removed. The way that I got it out was I basically unbolted those three nuts that are holding the main bracket down there in place. And then that moves the bracket out of the way and you'll be able to get to this connector and you basically squeeze both sides of it and then you'll be able to pull it off of that white line. Also keep in mind, all of this stuff is emissions related. So your entire EVAP system that recirculates your fuel vapor is emissions related. And if you delete it, it's going to cause codes and it is going to throw a check engine light. 
So if you want to disable those codes so that the check engine light doesn't show, you'll need to work with your tuner or some tuning software allows you to disable codes yourself. And you'll need to do that to keep the check engine light off. So I will put the codes that I have disabled in the description for you guys for your reference to help you at least get that started and avoid running into a check engine light. But if you have emissions testing once a year or something like that, just keep in mind either A, this is not going to show ready or it's going to show bad, or B, you're going to have to swap back to your stock intake manifold and plug this back in for your emissions testing. So just keep that in mind. So now we can go ahead and set up the fuel rail. And what we're going to need to do first is basically set up the inlet and the outlet. So it comes with two of these and a block off. So if you're just running the TTAP fuel line that comes with it, then you can basically just take one of those, throw it out. If you're going to be running a return, then you'll put that second fitting on this attachment, but since I'm only using the T-fitting, I'm just going to use the one that it came with, and then thread the inlet onto here. This is simply going to snap onto this fuel line. We have that there. And then on this end, we are going to tighten this on. Again, just torque it down. Now I've gone ahead and assembled the port injection part. So you can see I've basically got six injectors going into the fuel rail. You're just going to take each one out individually and then push the bigger end up into the fuel rail. And then you've got your T-fitting that goes in line with everything else. And I've got a lot going on for like my flex fuel and stuff. So I'll talk about this in my reflex video. But this line is the one that you're going to tee in. And then just kind of have that ready. It's a little bit easier to install that after you've screwed down your intake manifold because the bolts that mount onto here are kind of underneath it. So if you put the fuel rail on first, you're gonna have a hard time accessing those bolts to tighten it down. So just kind of stage it up like this and have it ready to install after the manifold's bolted in place. Now, since I like to remove these coolant hose clips, I just don't want them to drop down in the engine bay somewhere. So removing them completely makes it easier for me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall those clips. So that way I can simply clip it back onto the coolant lines on the intercooler. Then we're going to go ahead and place the phenolic spacer where it goes. It doesn't stay in place very well, so just kind of get it in the ballpark. And then we're going to bring in the intake manifold. Just kind of take your time, make sure you're not pinching any lines, wires, or anything. It's going to be a snug fit, but it should install just like the stock one. So work your way around until you get it fully seated on the cylinder head. Now we're going to lift it back up so that we can get the actual coolant lines connected. I found that reaching from the front of the car is the easiest and unfortunately you can't see it great on this video, but the coolant lines are a lot looser since they're not clipped onto the manifold. So you have a lot more room to kind of move them around and align it with those coolant hose connections. So again, take your time, work around to get all of them snapped into place, and then you should be able to lower the intake manifold again. Now, in order to line up the holes with the phenolic spacer, what I do is I put an Allen key through the bolt holes. And while I'm aligning the phenolic spacer, I'm basically able to use that as a stud. So I push that through and that holds everything in alignment. And now we can go ahead and bolt the intake manifold in place. We're going to use these machine screws that came with the kit, stack them with a lock washer and a regular washer. That'll just make sure they stay in place. And we're going to put them in each of the holes, starting with the one behind the map sensor, just because that's the most difficult to access. Make sure you use an Allen with a rounded head that will allow you to get it into the hole, even though it's at a slight angle. And you can kind of see how it looks here going through the hole. You're going to be able to tighten that bolt. Just take your time and make sure you get it all aligned 
so that you don't have any difficulty. At this point, you can install the other six bolts. They'll be much easier. And when you're tightening it down, I recommend starting with the middle bolt and then working your way back and forth towards the outside to make sure that you tighten down the manifold evenly. And then at this point, you can rotate the map sensor back in place, align that screw hole, and reinstall the screw and nut so that it is secured and it won't move. And now we can install the fuel rail. Just be extra careful as you're aligning the injectors so that you get them in each of the holes properly before you start pushing down. It'll probably be difficult to fully get them seated, but if you get them low enough, you'll be able to install these three cap screws. And as you tighten those screws, it'll fully secure the fuel rail and the injectors. So just tighten that to lower it down, and then you should be good to go. And then don't forget to reinstall the two screws that hold the intake manifold onto the support bracket. The kit comes with two additional screws, but I just found that the stock screws fit better on my car. So feel free to use whatever works best for you, but go ahead and tighten those down to secure the back of the intake manifold. Next, we're going to reinstall the throttle body, and you need to use these three screws that came with the kit. Do not reuse the screws that came out of the stock intake manifold. Then go ahead and line up your throttle body and thread those screws in place. It should be a 5mm Allen key in order to tighten it down. And then I did upgrade my charge pipe in order for this kit to fit the best. The stock charge pipe was just a little bit short on mine. Some people are able to make it work, but I would recommend getting an upgraded charge pipe just to make sure that the fitment is ideal and you don't have anything, you know, kind of pulling or twisted once you have the charge pipe reinstalled. Also, due to the EVAP delete, you're going to need to block off this hole on your turbo inlet. You can use a vacuum cap, or I had this piece that I was just able to clip onto here, and I installed a vacuum cap onto that. But if you need one, I recommend just going to your local auto parts store, you know, AutoZone or whatever, and they have these vacuum caps in variety packs, so you can just pick out the one that actually fits your application and then zip tie it in place if you want to give it a little bit of extra security. Then we have one last coolant line left, that top line for the upper connection on the intake manifold. So again, reinstall the clip, and then you just push it onto the plastic line, and it should snap into place and give it a little tug to make sure that it's held in securely. And yeah, at this point, installation is just the reverse of removal. So go ahead and plug back in all the connectors that you disconnected, of course, in my case, that also includes plugging in the port injection kit. And as you can see, I'm using the new plug and play harness. So I'll be posting a DIY on that in the future. So feel free to stick around for that. Or I'll post a link in the description if that video is already live. Also, make sure that you bleed your cooling system very well. I have posted a DIY on how to bleed the cooling system. And in this case, you only need to bleed the lower temp circuit. So... You can follow that process, do several bleeds until the coolant levels start dropping, take the car for a drive, make sure everything's good, let it cool down, and double check the coolant levels again just to make sure you got all the air out, and at that point you should be good to go to enjoy your new upgraded manifold with port injection and a much stronger metal construction. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below. Mm -mm. But these are really sticky.